discuss about morphological patterns of the acute inflammation clear so the main morphological hallmarks of acute inflammatory reactions are digestion of small vessels the first is your digestion of small vessels and accumulation of leukocytes and other type of cells so this is the basic hallmark of the acute inflammation now we will discuss in detail about inflammation types so the first one is your serous inflammation the first one is your serous inflammation so what is serous inflammation so serous inflammation is uh, only exudation of the cell poor fluid into spaces clear cell poor fluid means there is very less amount of cell will find in that fluid which is coming out due to exudation okay so serous inflammation the first important point that it is the exudation of cell poor fluid into a spaces those spaces are created into some spaces okay which is created by cell injury or into the body cavities lined by peritoneum line by pleura line by pericardium so this is the basic of the serous inflammation once again i am telling serous inflammation is marked by exudation of cell poor fluid into a spaces created by cell injury or into the body cavities either into spaces or into body cavities which is lined by peritoneum pleura or pericardium clearly now the fluid in serous inflammation is not infected by destructive organism so they are not infected by any destructive organism and so they will not contain large number of leukocytes so leukocytes number is also very less so i have told here cell poor fluid number of leukocytes is very less in amount clear no problem here clear now in body cavities the fluid may be derived from the, the in body cavities the fluid may be derived from the plasma how due to increase vascular permeability due to increase vascular permeability plasma fluid coming directly coming from the plasma the second it may be from the secretions of the mesothelial cells okay so it may be derived from mesothelial cell why due to irritation so this there are basic two mechanism okay there are two mechanism through which fluid is coming into the body cavity the first one increases vascular permeabilities includes vascular permeability and the second is irritation of the mesothelial cell clear now accumulation of fluid in this cavity is also known as effusion effusion is nothing it is the accumulation of fluid in this cavities fluid is coming through two region in either increase in vascular permeability or irritation of the mesothelial cells clear now one more thing effusion can also occur in non inflammatory condition this is which we have discussed is inflammatory condition in infusion can also occur in non inflammatory condition what are those non inflammatory condition so the first is your in heart heart failure okay such as reduced because there is reduced outflow in heart failure or reduced plasma proteins in case of kidney or liver diseases so these are the two reasons which there are two non inflammatory reasons okay of serous inflammation clear one of the basic example of the serous inflammation is your skin blister okay skin blister so skin blister resulting from a burn or any other viral infection represent accumulation of serous fluid within or immediately beneath the dermis epidermis of the skin clear so this is about your serous inflammation now we will move for the next that is your fibrinous inflammation the name itself suggesting many thing fibrinous means there will be presence of fibrin there is a presence of fibrin it's suggesting many thing okay so if there is greater increase in vascular permeability if vascular permeability is greatly increased then large molecules such as fibrinogen will pass out of the blood and come into the cavities okay and their fibrin fibrinogen is converted into fibrin and they get deposited into the extracellular space clear one more important point a fibrinous exudate okay develops when the vascular leaks are when the vascular leaks are large vascular leaks are large or if there is a local procoagulant stimulus as in case of cancer procoagulant stimulus sorry so there are two basic reason of the exudation of the fibrous inflammation means when it will develop there are two reasons if there is vascular leaks which are larger in nature and if there is procoagulant stimulus as in case of the cancer clear now next point a uh, fibrinous exudate is characteristic of inflammation in the lining of body cavities such as meninges pericardium pleura clear now next point fibrinous exudate may be dissolved the fibrinous exudate which is getting deposited into cavity it may be dissolved by fibrinolysin 
it may be dissolved by fibrinolysin and cleared by the macrophages but if the fibrin is not removed over time it will stimulate the growth of it will stimulate the growth of your fibroblast and blood vessels so if it is removed by fibroblast then okay if it is not removed by fibroblast then it will stimulate the growth of fibroblast cells blood vessels and it will lead to scarring it will lead to scarring clear and the conversion of fibrinous exudate to scar tissue that is also known as organization one term he used here organization clear no problem here now we will move for the next one that is your purulent inflammation clear so moving to the next one that is purulent inflammation so purulent inflammation is characterized by the production of pus pus is present in this type of inflammation okay what is pus so pus is an exudate consisting of neutrophils plus consisting of neutrophils plus liquefied sorry here you are not able to see liquefied debris of necrotic cells so pulent inflammation will contain pus pus is exudate which contain neutrophil and liquefied debris of the necrotic cells and edema fluid so these are the three contents of the pus neutrophil liquefied debris of the necrotic cells and the edema fluid now the coming to the cause the frequent cause of the pulent inflammation is infection with bacteria that will cause liquefied tissue necrosis such as staphylococcus these pathogens are also referred to as pyogenic why pyogenic because they are pus producing so they are also known as pyogenic bacteria a common example of acute purulent inflammation is your acute appendicitis okay acute appendicitis is a common example of this now coming to the next term that is your abscess so abscess are localized collection of purulent inflammatory tissue caused by uh, your different types of bacteria in a tissue organ or confined space this is so it is basically collection of purulent inflammatory tissue clear now abscess characteristic of the abscess so abscess have a central region okay suppose this is a central region so abscess have a central region that appears as a mass of necrotic leukocytes and tissue cells so this is the mass of necrotic tissue cells leukocytes and there is usually a zone of preserved neutrophils around this necrotic focus okay and outside this region there may be vascular dilation vessels will be dilated and parenchymal and fibroblastic proliferation outside this so again depicting the uh, morphology of uh, abscess so abscess have a central region that appears as a mass of necrotic leukocytes and tissue cells there is usually a zone of preserved neutrophil around this necrotic focus and outside this region outside this region there will be vasodilation vasodilation and parenchymal and fibroblastic proliferation clear so this is the third now moving to the fourth one okay fourth one is your basically ulcers we will focus on in fourth one will be ulcers what is ulcers now ulcer is a local defect okay uh, of the surface of an, any organ or any tissue that is produced by shedding of infl inflamed necrotic tissue this, this is the basic definition of romans it is a local defect okay it is a local defect of the surface of any organ or tissue produced by the shedding of inflamed necrotic tissue now most important point ulceration can occur only when mind it ulceration can occur only when only when tissue necrosis and resulting inflammation exist either on or near a surface so this is the basic definition this is the basic re um, need so ulceration can occur only when tissue necrosis and resultant inflammation exist on or near a surface at that place ulceration will occur now ulceration ulceration is mostly encountered in mucosa of mouth intestine git tract so these are the three places where mucosa is generally affected by your ulceration the second one is skin and subcutaneous tissue of the lower ex extremities in older persons who have circulatory disturbance that predispose to extensive ischemic necrosis so they are the they are the these are two main location for the ulcerations clear and the most common ulceration is your peptic ulcer of the stomach or duodenum we are knowing already and we will discuss that in separate video also about ulcers clear so these are the basic morphological changes which are found in your acute inflammation now after completing the morphological changes of the in the acute inflammation we will also 
discuss about outcomes of the acute inflammation so inflammatory reactions typically have one of the mainly three outcomes we are going to discuss in this video are the three outcomes the first one is your complete resolution clear so in a perfect world if you are thinking then all inflammatory reactions once they have succeeded in eliminating the offending agent should end with restoration of the site of the acute inflammation to normal but it is in perfect world this is called resolution and is the usual outcome when the injury is limited or short life or when there have been a little tissue destruction clear resolution involves it involves removal of your cellular debris and microbes by guess macrophages okay as well as reabsorption of your edema fluid which has come out by lymphatics so these are the two main functions in complete resolution cellular debris by macrophages and macrophages and edema fluid through lymphatics this is complete resolution the second one is healing by connective tissue replacement that is known as scarring or fibrosis so this occurs after substantial tissue destruction when the inflammatory injury involves tissues that are incapable of regeneration or when there is abundant fibrin aggregation in tissues okay that cannot be adequately cleared in this situation in this situation connective tissue grows into area of damage or aggregate converting into a mass of mass of fibrous tissue okay a process which is known as organization which we have discussed okay yeah. so it is healing by connective tissue repairment the third is your progression of this response to chronic inflammation okay the third outcome may be chronic inflammation clear okay. so this is all about your acute inflammation so